This episode is brought to you by Dr. T's Primary Care for Men. Get back your pride. Call them 956-441-2188. This episode is brought to you by the Law Offices of Rene A. Flores. Hashtag DWI expert. Hey, it's Charlie Corona here for the PVT Network, hashtag PVT, Professional Valley Talk. And we're here at the RGV Sports Show. And well, 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 look who we ran into. It is the world's strongest man, Mr. Mark Henry. Mark, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, man. I mean, I had a nice little drive yesterday. Got mm -hmm. to see the sights. Beautiful countryside. Dro now drove I'm down here. from where? I drove down from Austin. I'm a Texan. Okay. Great to meet a fellow Texan. Are you permanently residing in Austin? I am. I've been uh, I've been in Austin since 2001. I have a place in New York as well, but uh, I, Texas is home. What made you pick Austin compared to Houston or Dallas? Or you know what? I actually didn't really have a choice in the matter. My manager and uh, coach mm -hmm. uh, was a professor at the University of Texas in Austin. Okay. So when he came in to Austin, to my little small town in Silsby, Texas, on the border of Texas, Louisiana. Um, he was like, man, I'd love for you to come and train here until we can get you acclimated to the Olympic sport, and then you can move to Colorado Springs and live at the Olympic Training Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I did. So I went to Austin. I stayed with him for about nine months, and uh, him and his wife, Jan, and boom, I ended up in Colorado Springs nine and a half months later. Do you still have family in Silsby? Uh, yeah. What was it like growing? It's a, like what a tiny town, correct? Oh, three thousand people. So, what was life like for a little Mark Henry running around in Tillsby? You know what, man? We was poor, poor, poor. I mean, you stomp on the floor, dirt came through the boards. Like it was poor. My my mom wouldn't eat until me and my brother had enough. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know we were poor. You were happy. We were happy. We went to church all the time. Um, I grew up in the town that I, I was that I lived in was pretty racially divided. The black people lived on one side of town, the white people lived on another side of town. It was only one Hispanic family and okay. one Indian family okay. in the town. <laughs> and uh, Dr. Patil, the Indian guy, was the doctor. Okay. And um, the uh, the Spanish kid um, uh, Gutierrez. Okay. Uh, he he. Uh, played football and baseball with us and uh, was one of my favorite guys because he was tough and, and could play basketball, man. So we grew up, you know, we would always want to be on the same team because we were the two big guys. Right, yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's get these rebounds. <laughs> Speaking of being a big guy, all right, so how did you transition into – powerlifting who said you know what mark or did you see something what was the evolution of all that you know what that was me um i saw the 76 olympic games and i saw vasily alexiev compete and i wanted to be him okay and i begged my mother for weights uh she couldn't afford to buy them uh when we got to about i guess i was 11 and my brother was 13 um, they finally scratched some money up together, and they bought us, like, those concrete. Remember those concrete? They're gray, ones? and then you pour concrete in there, and eventually the, the, the gray kind of falls apart. Yeah, you know? it, all, yeah. it all breaks out for a little yeah. while, but uh, that's what we train with. And, and I, I lifted every day. I mean, that was my fortress of solitude to be able to go and just work out with. And my neighbors would come work out. All the kids hung out at my house because my mom was a great cook, mm -hmm. and and <laughs> all the kids wanted to come eat. But they also knew me and my brother was going to be in the front yard lifting. Was your brother of equal size? I mean, could at he that time he was bigger than me. Okay, he was, um, uh, I, I ended up being taller than him and, and weighed more than him by the time you know we were in high school. But um, he was all American uh, football player at Texas A and M. He was on that wrecking crew defense uh -huh. and, um, like, really, really talented player and uh, had a career-ending injury and had nerve damage. He can't really, you know, miss his four, three fingers. 
uh, lost, had some nerve damage, so he couldn't play no more. Mm -hmm. So you so you saw the seventy six Olympics and you said that so was that like locked into your brain that's what I'm going to accomplish I'm going gonna to the be, Olympics I'm going to be a strong man like I I didn't really the 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 sport that I was the best at was not in the Olympic games powerlifting was not in the Olympic games and you know I still hold the Texas high school records and um, it's it's like awesome man that I get to go to the state tournaments and see these kids lift and they still appreciate me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I feel like Texas is the best state in, in the country as far as for powerlifting. And we usually end up winning the nationals. Our kids win the nationals every year. So um, that's backed up by facts. It ain't, it ain't opinion. Hey, well, you're competing with Dallas. You're competing with Houston. You're competing with Austin. It's, it's just, it's yeah. an enormous state. LaPorte so, used to be real good when mm -hmm. I was in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, a Leaf Elsick in Houston. A lot of the Houston schools had a lot of the really the best lifters. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, all over Texas, you would find, I mean, it was very competitive. And did you ever have in the back of your mind, you know what, maybe one day I'd like to do wrestling. Was wrestling part of your universe, or where was wrestling in all of this? Man, I was a wrestling fan. Like, I, I grew up watching wrestling from Houston wrestling, Dallas wrestling, Mid-South was in Louisiana. Who did you love? Who was your favorite? Oh, Andre the Giant was my favorite, yeah. you know, to, to watch him travel. Because he traveled around. Oh, yeah. He didn't just wrestle for WWF at that time. Mm -hmm. um, he wrestled for everybody. He was an attraction. Um, I saw him wrestle in Dallas um, at the Sportatorium. Uh, I saw him wrestle for Paul Bosch in Houston. Uh, I saw him in Lafayette. Um, at the Cajun Dome. Man, you saw him a lot of times. Man, I, I'm as a kid, I was trying to. I, I, I just loved Andre. I wanted to. I wanted to reach out and touch him. I wanted to be friends with him because uh, he was a big dude. He was yeah. bigger in life, man. And I, I just I, even now, yeah. Like I see a big dude, and he could be working construction, and I'll go, "Hey, man." <laughs> How much you lift it? You know, I just talked to the big dude. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, you, there's a bond there. So you went to the world famous Sportatorium. Yeah. When the Von Erichs were there, well, did mm -hmm. you go around that time? I did. And, I did. And, I'm, I'm Fritz Von Erich, man. Like everybody was like, if you didn't know Fritz Von Erich, you wasn't a wrestling fan. No. Oh no. no. You know what I'm saying? That's like saying you didn't know who Andre the Giant or Hulk Hogan was or Ric mm -hmm. Flair. Right. Like, you you wasn't a fan, so yeah, I definitely you know my grandmother was the one that um, used to travel around. We would get on the Greyhound bus, man, and go and watch wrestling. That and sounds great. Man. It was fun. That man. sounds great. And drive all through the night because you know we wasn't staying in a hotel or nothing. So we go to Dallas. She didn't have a car. We go to Dallas on the Greyhound, take like eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> And we sit outside until wrestling started at 7 o'clock, go watch wrestling, go back to the bus station at 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11 o'clock when it was over, get on the bus, go back to Beaumont. But, hey, some of the best memories are just right there. Me and my granny, man, that was, that was it. Now, are you speaking? We're talking about size and bulk. Is this, some, is this the lightest that you've been in a long time? Oh, yeah, since high school. Okay, so what made you say, hey, you know what, time to slim down. What happened to you? Man, I was not. I'm not going to compete no more. I wasn't winning no strongman contests. I don't train like that no more. I don't eat like that no more. I eat because I want to eat something delicious. Right. When I was competing, I ate, and I was just like, I don't want to eat no more. But I knew I had to because I needed the calories and I needed the protein. And you know, I went from eating thirteen thousand calories a day to eating. Uh, 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day. How do you feel now that you're this light? I feel light? great. I feel great. I got, you know, my back is a little jacked up, but outside of that, no wrestler is going to leave wrestling unscathed. True, yeah. You're going to have some <laughs> residual injury when you're done with wrestling. So people come up to you and they talk to you. What is the thing that you always hear? Hey, what is the, the memory that they have of you? Uh, me breaking the ring in San Antonio is uh, is pretty high up there. 
me kissing Mae Young, uh, uh, the whole sexual chocolate thing was, right. was very memorable. And um, me, um, me winning the world championship against Kane and Big Show, and me winning the world championship against Randy. Like that, those are the things that kind of stand out the most. Mm -hmm. But it's it's different with different people, you know. Like um, the younger kids, they you know they they remember me wrestling Randy. They remember yeah. me wrestling Undertaker, you know. Um, but the, like the older people, and I, I remember you and that old woman. <laughs> <laughs> now that was a crazy story. When they pitched it to you, what were you? Were you, did you 